Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and welcome to a very special spotlight. This will be a writer spotlight, even though Flynn Dilly did so much more than write during his career. I first discovered who Flynn Dilly was during an interview he did with Rodimus Primal in 2020, and I was immediately interested in finding out more about him. I watched all the videos of him at TFCon, Transformers documentaries, and I bought his book. Sometimes in my videos I will mention that an actor has been part of our lives since our first step. Well, Flynn Dilly is the embodiment of that statement. I found tons of stuff I've consumed that he's been involved with, and that's always a treat for me. So let me show you what I found about this amazingly interesting man, and I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I did. Now there is a multitude of things that Flint worked on, and there's a story for how he got to work on each thing. But this being a spotlight and not a biography, I'm going to use my favorite analogy and say that what you'll see here is just the tip of the iceberg. Born on November 3, 1955 in Chicago, Illinois, as Robert Nichols Dilly, Flint is the grandson of John F. Dilly, who was the head of the National Newspaper Syndicate. It was him that commissioned Philip Nolan to create the comic strip Buck Rogers in the 25th century, based on his short story Armageddon 2419. This will be an important piece of Flint's life. He grew up with Buck Rogers, his dad still owned the rights to it, and people would keep pitching ideas to turn it into a TV show, comic or movie. Reading about his childhood, I found quite a few ironic pieces. Here is one of the best writers in the business, and I found out that he was in a special reading class growing up, that his writing and English teachers hated him, and that his grades were terrible. It's like when it became public knowledge that Albert Einstein failed his math class. But that didn't stop him from graduating with a bachelor's degree in ancient history and classical rhetoric from UC Berkeley, and a master's in fine arts and professional writing cinema from the University of Southern California. After some years trying various projects, Flint eventually met with Gary Gygax. Yes, THE Gary Gygax. The all-father of my teenage years and most of my adult years. Flint and Gary got along great, and thus began a game writing and designing career for Flint. He worked on the Sagard the Barbarian gamebook series, worked on the adventure board game Dragon Strike, directing the video portion, and directed several interactive audio projects including First Quest, Karamikos, Red Steel, and Planescape. He co-wrote the Agent 13 The Midnight Avengers series, and had the board game A Land in the Sand published, which was about the Gulf War in Iraq, and was released on the same day the US bombing started. Parallel to all this, he also got into cartoon editing, writing and producing. He was introduced to Joe Ruby of Ruby Spears production as a member of the Dilly family estate, who owned the rights to Buck Rogers. As Flint puts it, that made him royalty in a sense. Joe was interested in those rights and gave Flint his first shot, and that would be Flint's cartoon career start. A two weeks trial period became a position as Saturday morning development writer, which led to writing script for Mr. T and RoboForce. From there, it snowballed and got bigger for him, eventually making his way to Sunbow production as a writer, story editor, associate producer, and co-producer on several shows including G.I. Joe, and Humanoids, Visionaries, and our favorite, The Transformers. Flint was brought from G.I. Joe to The Transformers with a mission to give it some edge, and that's what he did. Flint had done story editing for Transformers to help when needed in Season 1. But in Season 2, he became both the story editor and the associate producer and wrote the story for a prime target. He then did an extensive rewrite of Ron Friedman's screenplay for Transformers the movie and then wrote the five parts of Five Faces of Darkness. In my opinion, that five-part story is one of the best one for the show, as it established a lot of lore that is still used today. He was also heavily involved with G.I. Joe, writing seven episodes including The Game Masters, starring Flint and Lady J, and editing 55 episodes. He co-produced and wrote 13 episodes of Inhumanoids, and was the writer and co-producer for the movie. He mentions in interviews that to him that's all the same universe as some character will make cameos in different shows, such as Commander Cobra in Season 3 of the Transformers, Flint and Lady J being Marisa Fairborn's parents, and of course Hector Ramirez being seen in four Sunbow shows being Transformers, G.I. Joe, Inhumanoids, and Gem. This is better than the MCU. Flint then worked on Visionaries Knights of the Magical Light, 
writing seven episodes of The 13th Air. Working with Sambo was some of the best moments of his life from what I can gather from my research. He loves going to conventions to talk about it, meeting again with the actors he got to watch in action when he was associate producer on the shows. Eventually Sambo had to close shop, so Flint went to work for various companies, like creating garbage pail kits for CBS, based on the trading card games of the same name. And that's just the 80s. In the 90s he worked with Steven Spielberg while doing a screenplay for American Tale Feeble Goes West, plus he wrote and edited the series Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. But the 90s is where he transitioned to the video game industries, occupying various roles of writer, producer, director and designer. He worked on many titles, such as Tomorrow Never Dies, both Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay and Assault on Dark Athena, Soviet Strike and its sequel Nuclear Strike, Army Men Sarge Zeros, Dead to Rights, Batman Rise of Sinzu, Constantine, Teen Titans, Superman Returns, Transformers The Game, Ghostbusters, Diablo 3, Starship Trooper Invasion, and Double Switch 25th Anniversary Edition. And in 2018, he went back to cartoon as producer, scriptwriter, and global adaptation producer for the series Ingress the Animation. And this is where I'll stop, because honestly, this was a hard script to write for two reasons. First, I've read his book, and contrary to my usual internet ghost I do video about, I had too much information about Flint, and it was really hard to pick and choose what to show. But I figured sticking to my usual video format was best. Second, I was writing an amateurish script for a writer. That's the equivalent of an aspiring comedian roasting Dave Chappelle. It's intimidating. And on top of all he did, he also teaches classes on how to write video games and wrote the ultimate guide to video game writing and design with John Zur, and also published and co-wrote a 1990s Buck Rogers graphic novel. And again, this is just a small portion of everything he's done. I consider him a pioneer in trying to bridge the gap between movies and video games, as he believes it's becoming one big media. And I think he's right. Some games have better stories than a movie or TV show. I love Flynn Dilly. He's an amazing storyteller, both in fiction and real life. I'm telling you, pick up his book, The Games Master, almost famous in the geek 80s. It's absolutely brilliant. It paints a good picture of the life in the entertainment industry in the 80s and more. It's full of big names, amazing stories, and a very unique perspective of what went on at TSR. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Flynn Dilly's career. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you a right to be an asshole. Take care! Oh, and he confirmed that Skywarp became Cyclonus. So suck it.